Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And it's that time of year again where I make yet another sprite of Luke Skywalker. I've been doing this every year since I started pixel art. It began as an exercise that was a nice way to test out how much my skill might have improved over the previous year. But I'd say after about 2018, I started just embracing it as a tradition. And now it doesn't really matter all that much that I outdo myself, but rather that I just keep it going and have fun coming up with whatever variations or styles speak to me at the time. Last year, I set an exciting milestone by creating the smallest sprite in the roster so far. So I thought it'd be fun for this year to go to the exact opposite end of the spectrum and create what will be the largest sprite in the roster. So I'm getting started here by measuring out a height of 64 pixels to create the character within. As it stands, the tallest sprite so far is actually the one from 2018, which measures 46 pixels to the top of the head. Uh, or 58 pixels up to the lightsaber if you count that, which I don't, uh, so let's say 46. Making a sprite that's 64 pixels tall, uh, for some it might just be another day at the pixel art office, but for me it's really not the kind of scale that I tend to work within. I generally feel most comfortable in the sort of 32 to 48 pixel range, uh, or smaller than that even, since I tend to do a lot of Game Boy kind of stuff. But 64 pixels, for me, it's kind of close to this tipping point where I can definitely feel some of the cracks in my artistic fundamentals start to show up a little bit easier. And it does take a bit more effort to kind of keep track of the proportions and the overall style. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing along the way here is just flipping the sprite to its mirror image. I always find that this kind of refreshes my view, you know? Uh, they say it's especially effective when placing features on the face to kind of do this thing. But I find even for a full character body, it really just resets the way that I look at their proportion and pose. So it's a nice way to catch if there's something wrong with the limbs that I might have otherwise overlooked. As I continue to erase from this silhouette and add details, the other thing I'm thinking about is just what sort of style this sprite could have. This is one of those ones where I just jumped into it without really imagining what the final product would be. Uh, I really just had that idea of the height sorted out. Uh, so there's a bit of discovery happening along the way, uh, just testing the waters with what this pixel density allows in terms of adding details for the face and the clothing. So it's kind of this mix of drawing, but also experimenting. I remember though, sometime last year, I did a similar thing for a Darth Vader sprite, like a redraw. And I remember that one ended up being pretty large too, but I really liked the style of it and I had a feeling that this one was gonna shape up in a similar way just because they were likely to be close in scale. So I had that image in my mind, and that helped dictate some of the artistic direction. And we'll check at the end of this how those two compare with one another, because in some ways that it might actually just sort of reflect what my artistic tendencies are at this sort of sprite scale. At this point, I've kind of exhausted what's possible with just playing around with the line work alone. So that tells me that it's time to start adding some basic shading. I'm going to build this one up slowly and just start right now with a handful of grayscale tones to start defining some of the dimensionality and blocking for the sprite. It's not that the final product is only going to use four colors or anything like that, but it's just to slowly work out how the rendering will look in terms of how many steps of light and shadow I might need to kind of sell the overall detail here. Uh, and don't worry, I'm well aware that right now he's slowly starting to just look more like Anakin than Luke. Uh, I really have no idea how that started to happen, the, uh, the balance of the force moves in mysterious ways sometimes. But I will say that I was trying to do a bit of a windswept thing for the hair, so I think that just got out of control at some point maybe. So to rein that in, I've reworked the hairstyle just to have these smaller, smoother patches of pixels. And I've also made the form a little bit more slender, I think that just seems to work well for my version of Luke here. All right, so now that the grayscale version's in a good place, I'm gonna start replacing some of those tones with colors that are more or less a match to those same levels of brightness. And for these colors, I'm actually just gonna pick a few off of this selection of older sprite work. Uh, I mean, at this point, we can kind of see the kinds of colors that I tend to gravitate to. Uh, like, it's not uncommon for me to go with something that has a cool hue to it rather than being, uh, you know, completely desaturated gray or black for the tunic. Uh, so even though I'm starting from these existing colors though, what I'd like to do is to try to branch out a bit and make these into slightly more costume accurate colors. So I'm starting from the vibrant ones, but then desaturating them a little bit just to see if I can make it a more sort of mature look, I guess, <laughs> rather than being like super bright and colorful. For a bit of the fine tuning with the color here, I'm going through and recoloring some of the outlines of the hair and skin to have this sort of brown outlining to them 
just so they really stand out and kind of balance just how there's darker areas of the costume, they can kind of provide some vibrancy. As a final bit of polish, I'm going to paint in a bit of green lightsaber glow on the clothing. So I've got a new layer on top of my sprite, and this is set to the color blending mode. So if I paint on this layer in green, it turns everything below the brush stroke into that hue. Uh, this is obviously really strong at full visibility, so I'm going to reduce the layer opacity to 40% just by eyeballing that. And now just kind of layer in that green over top. The color blending mode I'm using, by the way, doesn't affect the brightness. And I think that these spots should get a little brighter than their base color. So another mode may have been a better choice, uh, but I've just made a couple more manual adjustments to the color there anyway, so it kind of worked out either way. But let's go ahead now and take a look at how that all came together. Here we go. All right, so there's our boy for 2023. As you can see, I brought that glow up into this brighter, almost olive sort of green. And then I tried to sort of unify this effect down to just two or three unique green tones. I feel pretty good about the stylistic direction this ended up going. And we'll check him in the full lineup in a second. Uh, but first, I just wanted to bring in that Darth Vader sprite that I was talking about earlier, because I think he's going to be a close match here. And by pure luck, he's actually fairly close that you could kind of see them together. But I think Darth could afford to be even taller here. So what I did was just slice the sprite at three different spots and bump it up by a pixel each. And then closed off those gaps just by copying some adjacent pixeling. And that's looking closer to a fitting scale. As I said, it wasn't really planned uh, from the start that they'd even go together. <laughs> I probably should have thought forward to that. Um, especially because Luke's outfit isn't even the proper one for when they meet. I digress. Um, but this isn't looking too bad at all. All right, well, let's go back to the full lineup and get this year's placed in with the rest now. I think my favorite thing about seeing the lineup this time around, uh, well, actually, there's two things. Uh, I like how the smallest and the largest sprites are right next to each other like that. Uh, but also, I was going to say that I like how there's almost an echo of that 2019 sprite in the new one. Uh, it's probably just that it's the same pose, but I think it does a nice job highlighting some of those style and skill evolutions that kind of happen slowly over the years uh, to then end up with the 2023 one like that. Uh, it also looks like next year is going to be the 10th sprite in the series, so I might have to start brainstorming something special for that one soon. But I guess I also have to wait and experience the entirety of next year to then know what feels right at the time. <laughs> so in the meantime, let's just finish this one out with some CRT time. And thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.